What's up guys, it is Delta we are back with some more Final Fantasy Tactics 1.3. For the most part, we are just going to get right into it today. We got... Oh, it's not even here yet. <laughs> There's going to be a battle up here, don't you worry. Before we do though, I wanted to thank one of you guys for clarifying a little bit on how the Onion Knights actually work in the PSP version. Uh, so you, you essentially get better stats as you master more jobs, if I'm understanding things correctly. But the big drawback in the PSP version is that you can't actually use any skill sets at all. And that is just such a huge downside. So honestly, it doesn't even sound like that's a worthwhile class in that version. So, yeah, that, that really blows. I'm so, I feel so bad for you guys because this version of the Onion Knight is just... Oh, man, she's so good. <laughs> As one of you guys said, she has a lot of layers. There's a lot of layers to her, so... She's a very useful unit in terms of 1.3. I don't know how much I'm going to be using her because I want to stick mostly to the generics. Obviously, that's the reason I asked you guys for names in the first place. But I did want to at least show that she does really crazy damage even right at base. So she can be very useful to anybody playing this game for themselves. And also, I did see somebody having a little bit of confusion with how these Lukavi are actually interacting with their host, I guess, as it were. So to the best of my understanding, it's sort of like a combination of two beings, if that makes sense. So, the Cardinal and Kecklin both shared the same body, sh both shared the same knowledge. And the Cardinal himself was still in there. He was still making decisions. He was still in control to some extent. But in the transform state, it's pretty clear that it's actually the Lukavi itself who is at the wheels so to speak and also since these demons are so powerful the hosts themselves are basically slaves to their every command if they wanted them to be but then you had somebody who, like Weegraf who very clearly willingly accepted help from Vilius and it would seem to imply based on that cutscene that he still has a decent amount of control he still is fully aware of everything that's going on it's just that his own knowledge is combined with the Lukavis, his own... His own body is combined with the Lukavis, and as part of this pact, I assume that the Lukavi itself has final say, more or less. Because even if the Cardinal was in control throughout most of the game as we saw him, you gotta keep in mind he still was technically working towards the Lukavi's own personal goals. The Lukavi are the ones who want these Zodiac Stones. So, it seems that if anything, it is indeed a combination of both the original host's will, as well as the demon's will. Hopefully that clears it up a little bit. Now, we did get those Germanic scriptures, but I'm actually not going to be reading them. You can find it online, you can play it yourself. But, like I say, the basic gist is that these scriptures more or less out the church and flip everything on its head. Everything that the people of Ivalice know is essentially wrong, and these scriptures are the only surviving proof of that. Uh, they were written by one of the disciples of St. Najora, I do believe, so it's a first-hand account about how everything that is commonly understood is in fact wrong. Ah, uh, the exotic wizard. The exotic pain in my ass. Heretic my G. No, oh, that's not me. <laughs> Where's Alma? If you want her back, come to Riavana's castle. But you must bring the Germanic scriptures given to you at the monastery. What does it mean to you? Haven't you read it? Yes, of course. I just explained to the good people. Return Alma if you don't want the church's lies exposed. You're in no position to demand. You have no choice. God damn you, dude. Just give me my sister back. <laughs> You've been warned. Don't make me play a four-part map. Don't you make me do it. He's gonna make me do it, isn't he? Oh no. But we now have our next destination. We gotta go to Riavana's castle, which will lead to the act three finale, all the way up here. And it is a four-parter. Well, I guess it's a three-parter, but you could argue four. Now there should be yet one more cutscene. Yes, there indeed is. The act three end game is actually brutally difficult. I think I'm gonna be making my G over into a chemist because I really, really need him to have some kind of defensive reaction command by the time we actually get to the second fight of Riavana's castle. If I was thinking about it a little bit harder, he probably would have been my chocobo gun guy for the Islude fight. And that would have 
basically got him to auto potion as a chemist. But I am not that good, so we're going to see if we can make it happen anyways. I think we should still have enough time, but I digress. So, here you are. Everyone was looking for you. Something wrong? I shouldn't talk to a princess in such a way. Stop it! By your leave, your most gracious majesty. I can't tell if he's being serious or what. Or is he just trying to be smooth? I can't really tell. Please stop. Sorry, I apologize. What are you going to do with me? I'm not Ovelia, you know. I'm worth nothing to you. Not even worth leaving alive. Yeah, she's really depressed about this. Like, you can see, it's hitting her so hard. And it, how could it not, though, right? If you lived your whole life as a lie, and then somebody came along and said, no, you're actually just some person. It actually reminds me a lot of Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, in a way. But I, I won't talk about why specifically, for obvious reasons, for those who have played it, but there's parallels for sure. Yes, you're not Obelia. We don't know your real name or even if you're a noble or a commoner. What did my life mean all these years? Raised as a substitute. <laughs> Amusing, isn't it? A princess must live her life quietly in a monastery away from the capital. I'd often wondered why only I had to live like that. But if my suffering would... Oh, nice typo there. But if my suffering would to keep Ivelisse in peace, if my suffering were to keep Ivelisse in peace, sorry, Delita, English is not my first language, then I thought I could endure it. What was all the grief and isolation I suffered for? You and I are the same. Miserable people forced to live false lives. Always being used by someone. Try hard and you'll be rewarded, they say. Lies. Only those close to the top are rewarded without trying. It's the way of the world. Most people have to act the roles given to them. Then again, most of them haven't even noticed that they're acting. God, El Delita is so smart. <laughs> That's what makes him so interesting to me because he's not technically wrong in anything that he's saying here. The way that the world works currently does very much reward those in positions of power over those in the right. If that makes sense. Just by being a noble in this world, you're automatically given a lot more privilege. And of course, those those who are wealthier are obviously going to live better lives. Even in the real world, right? That's not really a crazy assertion to make, right? I, I shouldn't say better. I should say they will live more comfortably. That's probably a more accurate representation. But, in the world of Final Fantasy Tactics, though, it doesn't matter really whether you're competent, incompetent, anything in between. If you are a noble, you're on top, and that is that. Which is what we're seeing a lot of here with the storyline up until this point. We're seeing a lot of people trying to change that, right? Each in their own ways. We know that my G wants to change that because he realizes the corruption of his brothers and he wants to make a difference in the world in his own way by changing the direction in which the Bayolf name is going. We already know what Weegraf's all about, right? He was the leader of the Death Corps, and they were going to try to change things by force. And his ideals didn't really change so much as he's now fighting for a new side, in this case, the Shrine Knights. The leader, though, he also wants the same thing. But we're not entirely sure about what it is that he's going to be doing just yet, so I guess I can leave it at that. But it's pretty interesting because we get to see the same, the same issue tackled throughout the game from the perspectives of three different characters who go about things in three very different ways. Which is, that's one of the things I really love about this game. It doesn't really spend too much time ignoring the main point, if that makes sense. We're still focused on the same thing. But the way that the characters actually perceive this issue changes from person to person, and as a result, their actions change as well. No way I'd do that. I won't be used. I'll be the one using. Those who use me must pay for what they've done. God, that's a hardcore, Delita. What will you do? Trust me, Ovelia. I'll make a country worthy of you. I'll make your life shine. Let me guide you. Don't cry like that. Should I trust you? I won't betray you. Probably. I swear by my dead sister, Tita. So please don't cry. Uh, 
Oh, that's a nice scene, though. I like it. I'm down. Deleted a player. Not technically a princess, but hey. She's a close second, right? <laughs> okay, so real quick, just before we actually get into this map here, I, I really wanted to stress the point that the bar sections in this game do such a fantastic job of fleshing out the world around you. It's not necessary to understand for the purposes of the main story or anything like that. But if there were any question that you might have had, or if you were wondering how your deeds affect the world around you, the bar is just such a good way to actually get deeper into the lore like this. Because you can see right here, uh, this rumor about the rescue of Princess Ovelia, it, it essentially says everything that is known to the public people, right? Because it says, okay, Ovelia was abducted by Gelwan, and then Delita rescued her. Which, th that's the gist of this. I'm obviously not going to read all of this out, but it lets you know how the world around you perceives the events going on in the game. And that can just be very interesting at times. It also has uh, one about Draclau here, which is also pretty interesting because it shows that the, the story that people believe right now is that he was somehow assassinated. Uh, Zamo, in all likelihood, honestly believes that Ramza killed Draclau in cold blood. And rumors like this sort of back up that theory because the people are talking. They would be talking. That's a major event, right? A cardinal is killed and there's no truly good explanation for it because you can see right here. There's even rumors going around that it was some kind of monster that did him in, and that rumor is backed up because there was apparently an attack on the castle before the Cardinal had died, and the thieves were killed via crushing, implying that they were found by Draclau. He became Kecklin and crushed them. So there's just all these little details in this game that it never forces you to go out of your way to learn. I will say that they probably should have, in all seriousness, either forced you to read the Germanic scriptures or at least given you a Cliff Notes version of it or something, because that is fairly important in understanding things. I've already sort of covered the basic gist of it, so as long as you understood that, then you will understand the rest of the plot. But... It is very important. I'm not sure if there will be more rumors later on that will fill in the blanks even a little bit more than that, but... Bottom line, there's just an incredible amount of detail and thought put into the world of Ivalice and everything that happens in it, which is just so amazing to me. Now, I obviously can't read all of the rumors every single time because that would just be... Wow, that would be ridiculous. Oh, this one's actually pretty important too now that I think about it. The death of Marquis Elmdor. Yeah, so he's dead now. Known as the Silver Nobleman to his allies and the Silver Ogre to his enemies, Marquis Elmdor was hit by a stray arrow at the Battle of Fus Pass and died. His people believed in him and thought he was a devout believer in the Glabados Church. Many visited his grave to pay their respects. Since he was the leader that supported the Goltana army, the war effort will be affected. This one is actually important. And... It kind of ties into a greater issue that people have with this game in that... Act 4 seems a little bit more rushed than the rest of the game. But that's only because the previous three acts do a very good job of establishing themselves and explaining what's going on. I did know that uh, Elmdor actually dies, but it would actually be very good if the game were to have called this to your attention before the end of Act 3, which we'll see why when we get there, but... At any rate, we're gonna go on to Grog Hill now. I have my G as a chemist. He's rocking the chocobo gun. He's got a lot of speed set up because he's got time magic as well. I'm going to try to throw off a haste to the rest of our guys if we can. We have summon magic with magic attack up. I may or may not change that to short charge. It really just depends. But magic attack up with the 108 gems. Oh yeah, it's time for some more Leviathan because this next map is pretty crazy. And having a good AoE would help us out pretty considerably here. I'm not sure if I really want dancing on this next map. I'm really not, but the chip damage could be nice in case of some compatibility or faith shenanigans, so... I'm thinking we'll try at least one time with Dance. We'll see if it works. If it does, cool. If not, oh well. Uh, Cheryl's not coming along today. And we got MCP, the Monk Master. Is there a better reaction that he could have here? Hold on. Actually, he has CT saves, so that seems to be a little bit better even still. 
And I'm gonna throw steel onto Yershel now. Because there could be some good stuff that we can pick up here on this next map if we have a little bit of luck. We don't need armor steel or steel shield just yet. What I'm looking for is mostly weapons, accessories, and potentially a hat. Oh yeah, my G also has the ice shield to absorb any and all ice attacks. If I had more of those, that might be a good idea, actually. Hold on. Well, nobody else can really use shields, though. Nobody that I'm bringing, so I guess maybe that's not needed after all. But being immune to ice damage, and in fact healing from it, is pretty useful for this next map. Let's go, Grog Hill! So, in the original game, this map is like three squires and three chemists or something like that. It makes sense in terms of the story, don't get me wrong, but it is definitely a noticeable step down from some of the battles we've been facing up until now. Not the case in 1.3 though, oh no 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 no, it's much crazier. Alright, something like this should do us pretty well here, I hope. I pray. <laughs> this map can be very, very difficult, without a doubt. I certainly remember it giving me a little bit of crap the first time I tried this, and we're honestly almost caught back up to where we were in that playthrough, so... It's gonna be it's gonna be getting a little bit crazier real real quick especially once we get into act four but as you can see it's not just squires and chemists now there's three samurai here backing them all up damn what rotten luck a pursuit unit well not exactly we're just passing through my dude are you a non 10 patrol we're tired of fighting we want to go home we'd rather be poor and covered with mud than this we're sick of killing. We want to return to our families. Dude, you, you can do that. <laughs> Wait, we're not after you. What are you talking about? We have no desire to fight. Don't misunderstand. Don't lie to me. I want to get my ass kicked. You expect us... <laughs> so, I'm sorry. You expect us to believe you. Trying to get us off guard, then kill us. Well, none of your tricks will work. <laughs> no. Hey, he was on that wanted list. Huh? So what? It's him, the heretic, you know? If we bring him to them, they may let us off. You mean, going back to the knights? Getting a heretic's big, like getting enemy brass. If we get him, they might give us a discharge too. That's right, I know a guy who discharged in an exchange. We can go home big. Otherwise, we'll have to live in hiding as deserters. Right, let's catch him. We can even kill him. He's a heretic. They'll execute him sooner or later. We can go home by killing him. This is our last battle. I mean, you're not technically wrong. Oh, who the... Who are you? My name is Marche. I am a warrior in a land called Ivalice. God, I don't understand why he's here. Why is Marche here? It's why. <laughs> why? And if I'm keeping it a buck, I think that they probably should have cleaned up his sprite a little bit more as well. Cause it's it looks a little bit janky. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna front on that. I I don't understand why he's here. I don't understand why he's here, other than the fact that his game also technically takes place in Evil East, but I I don't even think it's the same Evil East. I think it's a fictional version of this Evil East, to be more precise, but. Ah, uh, whatever, man. <laughs> I don't have as big of a hate boner for Marche as I would have, like... Oh, I don't know. A few years ago. However long it's been. I kind of understand this game a little bit more and understand what it was trying to do a little bit more. But, man. It's just so weird that he's here to me. I don't know, I don't think I'm ever gonna get over that. I also gave him a really, really weedy voice in the first playthrough. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> Oh, where am I? Something like that. He sounded like a complete child, as he is. A child. Hey, it's dangerous here. Get back. Oh, what? What is this place? <laughs> I'm sorry if you're a Marche fan, but I'm not sorry. We can talk about it later. Stay back for now. I... <sighs> for some reason, though, he's way better than half of my guys. I don't understand. I really don't. He's... He's similar to the Onion Knight in that he has my G stat spread, except that Marche actually has a skill set of his own. Grimoire, which makes sense. And he can come with any number of things because he has a very good equipment draw. Usually, I thought he came with a book. I thought he usually came with a book, but I guess not. He does bring me a free twist headband, though, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, you can see he has a lot of HP there, though, because 
again, his equipment draw is pretty solid. He can use hats, heavy armor, and light armor. On top of being able to use swords, books, I forget if he can use rods or not, but I think he might be able to. I don't know, but he has he's really good, all things considered. If you can put up with him uh, having a very a uh, bit of a janky map sprite. And if you can put up with the fact that he is in fact Marche. Those would be the two big things. Anyways, I'm trying to set up for a good haste right here. I can probably get everybody I want to say. Ooh, I shouldn't have. Okay, I see a big mistake that I've already made. I should have I should have moved Yurchel here and not here because I want my G to be safe, if anything. Uh, who's coming up and when? Because I may be able to work around that depending on how long this haste is going to take. Ah, crap. That was such a huge mistake because if I... See, if I go in, they're going to drop me without a doubt. So that's not what's happening here. Instead, we're going to haste these three instead. Yeah, it seems to make the most sense. And those are our best odds as is. We don't necessarily need the MCP to be hasted up. Not where I can see. And similarly, Estelle is a dancer, so it's not really like that. Now, I didn't really talk about what that guy has. It seems like he's not a threat, but he's actually horrifying. <laughs> sure, he threw a stone, so that wastes a little bit of his CT, but we got to be quick. Otherwise, he's going to punch through us in no time flat. I assure you. Also, more summon guns, which is why I even brought Virgil with steel to begin with. I can get away with two of them if I really want to. I might try. I might try for two. But I want to get at least one, for sure. Having decent guns available to us is going to be useful sooner or later. I'm thinking mostly for a side quest way later on, but we need guns for that without a doubt. Oh, with CT save, maybe we could have made something happen here. I mean, that changes things a little bit. Now, we can't go with this guy because he's bonkers. Look at this. Look at this. Two Ice Brands, Flash Hat, Power Sleep, and 108 Gems. And the 108 Gems do boost the Ice Brand. Because it is Ice Elemental, you see. So he is incredibly dangerous, and he also has Hamido, and I'm pretty sure that he just always has this exact same setup. So he's always a terrifying threat, no matter how you want to slice it. And he's going to slice you if you're not careful. So that's why it's to your benefit to have some decent AoEs here. Because you can't really get into melee with him, obviously. Uh, Sagittarius, that is bad for us, because that's bad with Virgo. Oh my god, this couldn't be any worse. That's worse with Virgo. That's bad with Virgo. Is the game counter teaming me? What's happening? Uh, This is neutral at least, but they're so far away. Those aren't the guys I'm worried about. I'm worried about the first group. Hmm. We're gonna need a little bit of improv then in that case, without a doubt. Yeah, these compatibilities were awful, huh? couldn't be much worse than that uh, since we got so many bad rolls though I guess I should probably chip this guy down a little bit we don't want to be in melee with him though obviously because of that there uh, Hamido it's only 48 I mean it could do that I probably will 60 60 yeah okay let's do that let's do that spin fist will also pop her uh, MP switch basically oh but oh no it does spill over oh my god they changed it to spill over are you kidding okay so I know for a fact that when I first played this game MP switch did not consider the remainder of damage as HP damage it would just block the hit straight up but now it seems like it does in fact spill over the remaining damage uh, that, that nerfs the ability pretty significantly honestly but that's way better for me, and it's also way less annoying that way because some of the enemies were just borderline ridiculous with that combination. Especially if they could restore both their HP and MP at the same time. It made it nearly impossible to punch through certain units. But it looks like that is not going to be the case here. Now, Chamberlain, I imagine, is one of these... I almost said snipers, because goddamn if they don't feel like it. But I imagine he's one of the chemists, yeah. So what we want to do is actually hug the wall as best as possible so that they don't have a good line of sight on us. Yeah, that compatibility sucks, but I can at least throw something at him with Yurchil. And or just hit him with Elemental. Or just use... We, we have a lot of options, basically. 
I can hit this samurai and this samurai. But yeah, we have worst possible compatibility with her, and that's going to really hurt us. Uh, Marche is actually going to be helping us out here a little bit, though, I've just remembered. So that's good. Chamberlain cannot hit Regina because of where we put her. There's no way that he can. There's no way that he could get an angle on her, basically. Now, thankfully, Marche didn't get dropped by some bad luck there. Because if that guy would have pulled Odin or Cyclops, it could have been bad. By the way, yeah, the final summon for the Magic Cannons is, in fact, Cyclops. Just for the record. <laughs> and Marche's gonna summon Odin right there. That's some good damage, but it's not gonna be enough. Not quite yet. Uh, we know that we got to throw something at this guy to finish him off, so I suppose we can just do that. This is a good enough spot. We don't want to put ourselves in a position to get rocked by all of those dang old samurai. Because they're going to be living a lot longer than I had really anticipated. Now, it is unfortunate that we don't have good compatibility with them, but it also means that they don't have good compatibility with us either. So that's going to help us out a little bit in that sense. Is lightning boosted by this by chance? No, it's not. I was just, I was just kind of curious. It is raining, so technically it should be a little bit better on this map, but... No, I do want to spread out enough so that the draw-out spells aren't going to rock me, basically. And we'll throw out the Wiznibus, which should be doing 20-something. It's going to be doing even a little bit better than it was previously, because now we have her stacked out with all of this really good attack boosting stuff. And damage split. Goodbye, Marche. You fool. You fool. Now, can he actually crystallize on this map or what? Because I'm not entirely sure. So we kill the squire now. One of the samurais is fairly injured, but not nearly as much as she should be. Unfortunately. She should actually be taking twice this amount of damage. Which, as you can see, would be a very big difference there. Um, can I actually... I am going to move in with my G a little bit. That is going to give these samurai pretty decent positions to draw out, but only the one can truly reach me. And since she had worse with Regina, there's no way that she can kill her under any circumstances. So I don't really mind if they can get multiple of us in that sense. Yeah, we can't really do too much there. We're just going to move in. Of course, Monica can try to jump us if she wants to. I don't know how effective that will be. Yeah, she's actually going to jump uh, Estelle, which is the best possible outcome because Estelle is in the corner. She has auto potion to sort of mitigate some of that damage anyways. What? Oh, no. What happened there? Is she just that strong? Oh, my God. Oh, no. That was not what I expected. Oh, God. That was not what I expected. That is not very good. And the only... Yeah, the only meaningful reaction command right there was just avoided because... Oh, God damn it. How did... When did I take... I don't even remember when he got hit the first time, but he must have. He must have. So that means that that makes perfect sense that he was knocked out right there. Okay, I'll buy it. Um, hmm. We don't really have a whole lot we can do with you just yet. In light of that, we're just going to hang out. We're going to hang out. We're hasted, though, so that should mean that... We're not going to get any reactions ever. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Why? Uh, that's going to put us in range of that damage split a lot more quickly than I would have bargained for, really. With those chemists being chipped in the way that they are. Okay, they're not getting their reactions either, though, so fair is fair as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, with those chemists being chipped as they are, though, it does mean that... They're going to die over the course of the next few rounds. Or at least the one who is getting hit a whole lot will. Now, see, if I'd gotten CT saved there, I would have been pretty good off. These reactions aren't really going off for anybody, it would seem. But had I got CT saved there, I think I would have been able to pick up Yurchel before he lost his turn. Oh, she can just do 220. Why? I couldn't tell you out, but here we are. So, yeah, a lot of bad luck is kind of keeping us down here without a doubt just seems to make sense to get my G back so let's do it he can start chocobo gunning if I can get into range I think he should be able to at this point so that should help us out he lost his haste though and that sucks yeah I didn't think about my accessories too much I guess next time my G will have the rubber shoes 
without a doubt. And that would have fixed everything. Yeah, getting her MP back seems to make a great deal of sense to me. So let's do it. Let's do it up big. And I imagine that there's nowhere that I could move that would let me escape Chain Lightning, which is why I say next time we're doing Rubber Shoes. For sure. Now, of course, Estelle can die because she didn't get Auto Potion, which sucks, so that when the next Samurai jumps her, she's probably going to die. Uh, haven't really figured out how we're dodging that just yet, but we'll figure it out. There goes Damage Split. Her HP is sort of irrelevant at this point because, again, she's already in range, since she's not getting reactions. Now, Chamberlain's probably going to shoot the MCP or start healing, either or. Yeah, he's going to shoot the MCP. Please give me CT save. Oh, no, just give him Cyclops. Yeah, just give him Cyclops, too, while we're at it. Don't let me get reactions, but give them all the good stuff. I agree. Oh, I agree. Thank you. <laughs> Man. Well, not a whole lot I can really do. Oh, she can just hit from there, so it, it wouldn't have made a huge difference. This is going to be an L without a doubt, though. Without any doubt in my mind. Uh, if we don't have worse possible compatibility next time, that would really help out a lot. <laughs> because then this, this girl could be dead in theory. Because she would have taken 202 and not 101. She's the one coming up next, and she's my biggest issue right now. It would also help if we had gotten our turn with the MCP, like we should have. Man! But I think this is adaptable. We can make the adjustments. Okay, MCP and my G both have rubber shoes this time. And hopefully we don't get worst possible compatibility with these samurai. I mean, it can be played around, don't get me wrong. I think that we could have probably pulled through had I not lost my G, because that would have changed things pretty significantly. It was really more the fact that I didn't have the rubber shoes that screwed us up there. Yeah, Shell helps a good amount as well, though, too, because all of this damage that's coming your way is magical for the most part. With the one exception of the spear jump uh, samurai check, and also the dude with two swords and ice branch. But everything else is magically based, so getting a Shell on your team helps out a lot, too, especially if you can get magic defense up on top of that. Because then these guys would be doing about half the damage that they were on the previous attempt. Uh, let's see here. And the reason, again, I'm coming over here to the corner, despite the fact that I could, in theory, haste my whole team, is because I don't want to be getting shot by those summon guns. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. You don't want to be dealing with all these guys who are charging you right off the start, and then also have to be getting shot by a bunch of chemists with eight range. That just sounds awful. So instead... We're going to play a little bit of the long game here. Try to deal with the enemies in waves, basically. Yeah, as I thought, they're just going to stack damage onto Marche, though, because he is an idiot and he doesn't mind being right out there in the open. Dude has never played a shooter in his life, I can tell. There's no way that you would be in the middle of the field like this. Come on, dude. Get with the program. So she has no choice but to attack through her own guy if she wants to hit any of mine. And that's not really a worthwhile trade. Yeah, she did six damage to me to do 70-something to one of the most dangerous enemies on the map. So that is great. Hopefully Marche has some range this time because he can. I just... It would help if he did. I won't lie. Looks like he's an idiot. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> but we knew that, right? He's going to make it really hard for me to pick him up, huh? Now, fortunately... We only have like a 9% chance to not get any of these hastes or something. I think he has like a 9% chance to miss himself, I believe. But everybody else is pretty much guaranteed. Now, yeah, it's looking good. So are these guys set to be bad compatibility with me or what? <laughs> because that was just awful luck. Oh, yeah, now we're talking. Now we are talking. These guys have decent compatibility with us this time. That is way better. Uh, so... Leviathan probably kills you, as it does. I don't even necessarily think I need to move, so I'm probably not going to. No, there's, no, there's no way that that chemist can reach me. There's, It's not possible. I'm not having it, so we're going to save the CT. If he can reach me, I'm very dead. <laughs> I'm very, very dead. Oh, fe oh, thank God. Don't Odin me. Don't Cyclops me, I mean. Does this kill me? Come on, man. What is this RNG? Oh, ho, 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 baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> but that's actually what we want, because now he's way closer to us. Way closer to us. I don't need to do anything to that guy. Let's 
see, I could attack him. Or I could bring Estelle back out of range for this jump that's inevitably going to come her way. And she does still have MP switch, so it would probably be to my best interest to go for a Wiznibus anyways, just to try and pop that. We will get Estelle out of range. Seems to make a lot of sense to me. So there, she hasn't really taken a whole lot of damage just yet. She's totally healthy. Yurchul, we don't actually need him to throw on this guy this time, which is good. I'm thinking that I'm going to throw on this guy, basically. He doesn't have... Oh, he does have Abandon, so maybe I don't do that then. Besides, he dies to the next Leviathan, so there's actually no need for me to do that as far as I can see. Which would mean that our next best bet, I suppose, would be to try to steal this guy's Flash Hat right now. Yeah, it makes sense. Let's do it. Damn it. Oh, well. We're going to have to pick him up then, more likely than not. And we can do we can do our stealing one enemy at a time, basically. One enemy is really no threat of any kind. Yeah, let's start with the uh, with the dance, and I am going to move her to the corner again. That seemed to work out perfectly fine. Now let's get this Titan. There we go. Good damage on two of the chemists. Uh, on one of the chemists, I should say. And good damage on one of the samurai. It goes damage split. No, dra no dragon spirit, though, hopefully. Uh, nope, doesn't look like it. Cool. So she may or may not get dropped from there. Like I said, the compatibilities were obviously significantly better. We get rid of the Hamido guy, which is good. Wasn't able to get the flash out, which is not quite as good, but <laughs> we'll make do. We'll make do. So there is that. Coming up next, my G. I should imagine that they will be killing Yurchul. More likely than not. So from here, we're actually going to bring back Regina's MP because she needs it. Good old MCP isn't going to be able to get in in time, I should imagine. Yeah, we'll move to this corner then. I do want to, again, keep those sight lines broken, and I need to make sure that... Oh, God, dodge. Oh, <laughs> That's good, though, because now she's in a really, really great position to die to any kind of AoE here. Yeah, they're going to drop Marche as well. So we lost two, but we should also pick up two of our own right here. I hope. I pray. Wiznibus is actually going to be doing a decent amount to those chemists in the back, and it will probably take them out before I have a chance to do so with anything else. It also helps in this sense because... Ah, CG save. It also helps, though, because we can start punching through that MP switch and whatnot. Hoistler and Selena. Who and who? You, Selena? You're Cindy. You're Selena. Well, I can tell you how she's killing me. She's killing me with Chain Lightning, right? Oh, man, I should have went for Witch Hunt, I guess. Technically. Yeah, because if I had Witch Hunted them... She wouldn't be able to hit me right here. What about this, though? What about this? MCP moves first, so that means he can actually move in with the Leviathan attached to him. And I don't know... Hmm. I don't know a lot here, to be honest. But the main thing that I don't know is if this samurai can even kill me I'm still not in range of these guys with anybody uh, anybody who I specifically care about like that and this might even help us out a little bit more because if MCP goes in with the Leviathan attached to him if we get CT saved which we do so he's coming in right now yeah this isn't looking so bad not really because this is also going to mean that the enemies can't move in quite so far. Now, of course, it would have been better to be able to pick up Yurchul, but I think that we should still be able to do so with plenty of time to spare. And also, I didn't want Regina that close because it's just going to mean that she can be sniped by something, basically. But if I just move in right here, I, I mean, I could heal myself a little bit. Do I need to? Hmm. 
Yeah, I will. I will. That'll help me out because we're out here exposed like that. And I think that that's going to mean they have to spend a little bit extra time to actually take me out. I think. Now, what will Selena do? She's going to go for a stealth. Cool. Yeah, see, this is why I didn't want to move Regina in, because I guarantee she could have gotten popped by that chain lightning. And I'm not sure that she would have killed, but I think that we do actually have good compatibility with that particular samurai. So, that wouldn't be very good for me, now would it? We should take out one chemist, one samurai. And now we're making some pretty good headway here. Because the chemists are going to have to go into revival mode if they want to start putting their team back in this game. Okay, we didn't quite pick up the chemist. Or, I mean, I should say the uh, the secondary samurai, but she's on one HP. Oh, man. You hate to see that happen. Well, she's going to die to the next with Nibis no matter what happens, so she's basically a non-issue. This girl is about to be in range to be shot with the chocobo gun. This guy is in range to be shot with the chocobo gun. So we can start moving my G in as well. I can throw up another haste, I think. Can I get that in? Probably. Yeah, I can. So I can throw that up to MCP, which will help in picking up the rest of our guys. And now we've started to gain a lot of control here. I mean, it's only a 68, but I lose nothing by it, so why not, as far as I'm concerned? The haste might honestly make him get out of way of that jump. I'm not counting on it necessarily, but it would be pretty funny. We're not really worried about these damage slits because it's only 11 to pop. Let's see if we can't get this haste off, though. 68. Hey, we actually got it. So that's going to help us recover here. And I want to say that landing that is going to essentially seal the deal. This girl no longer has any MP to use whatsoever, so she has to go the long way now. She can't pelt us with magic. She's lost that option entirely. Uh, similarly... Hmm. What are we looking like here? Oh, yeah, it's a done deal. It's a done deal for sure. Uh, I'm going to heal back MCP a little bit. And we can wrap this up. I have no doubt. He's going to get CT save on top of that. And he has haste now as well. Wiznibus finishes her off now that she's back on the ground. Very easily, in fact. And at this point, I might stop my dance. Just so that uh, Estelle there doesn't get a billion and a half MP. Uh, yeah, MP. Yeah, yeah, MP. No, a billion and a half EXP. Now, did I, I should have charged it on him, right? If I was any good at this game, that's what I would have done. So I'm going to pick up Virgil at this point, who can then pick up Marche. That's where I'm at. Either way, uh, MCP is within range. No, no, no. We'll just use the Phoenix down. We'll just use the Phoenix down. Makes more sense. And at this point, all we really need to do is think about which items we, we might want to uh, make the effort to try and steal. I'll let one more go off so that this girl is in range to be shot. Seems to make a good deal of sense to me. Alternatively, I can just attack her right now. And then she would be within range to just simply die. Or can I even do it myself, do you think? It, it would depend on compatibility, I want to say. Uh, 60, 72? No, 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 it would be 78, I think, because it's a third extra damage from attack up. So that means that Yurtle can kill her. If I've done my math correctly, this should be a dead samurai. If I have not done my math correctly, this is going to get a little bit trickier. Yeah, 78, cool. So down she goes. We actually should have stopped dancing then in that case. Uh, Moogle should bring back MCP a little bit. It doesn't really matter all that much, but there is still one summon gun flying around, so... Yeah, we have so much control that I'm going to throw a Phoenix down to Marche. This should give them... I assume they'll try to kill Yurchul and Marche. Depending on what Marche does, of course, he might be able to move out of the way... Yeah, I should also probably stop dancing because eventually I'm going to put myself in range for some other nasty stuff here. So, Hoistler has to make a choice, and he's going to choose not to revive. He's actually going to do... What? <laughs> you could have just shot him. Why would he do that? I mean, yes, he's going to die from the poison, but... Why did you have to flex so hard? 
That, that's all that was. That was a flex play. <laughs> oh, man. That was too funny. <laughs> well, this samurai is probably going to rock my world, I have no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Still incredibly dangerous, but we have a lot of key players back in the game at this point, so I'm not really worried about it like that. Okay, so all I need to do then is Chakra for Regina. She'll be able to Leviathan once more. That will, without any doubt in my mind, kill the last samurai. Which means, good game, basically. Now, Yurtul doesn't actually have any revival of his own, but we still have the MCP. And we'll pick up my G. And also, we have Fairy on Regina. It's just that it's fairly expensive. We'd need to Chakra her again to do it. Yeah, as much as I would like to go in after that chemist right now, it's very dangerous if I did. Because that's going to mean we need to rush to the north as soon as possible. And I don't really like... And I don't like that kind of pressure, you know? <laughs> so instead, we're just going to kill this last samurai. We can't do it, really. Wow. Uh-oh. Well, I can get a fairy off. Yeah, I guess we're reviving my G then in that case. I mean, she's a dead woman walking, as far as I'm concerned. I just need to make sure that we're not losing everybody all at once, basically. Yeah, leaving her on this dance might have been a mistake, though, because that's going to make it very hard to actually get anything from this map. The only thing you really need to get is the magic guns, because those are limited in quantity. The flash hats are buyable eventually, so honestly, I may just do without. Same with ice brands. You can even poach them at this point, I'm pretty sure, so it's not like they're a necessity. None of this stuff is a necessity, per se. It's just that it's pretty good, and I would like to get what I can, basically. This is a much easier opportunity to pick up magic guns anyways, because this battle is not so bonkers to try and play out as compared to the Wii Graph fight. Now, I imagine that my G just dies again, but that's, that's what we need, I think. We need to make sure that we're not getting overwhelmed basically okay I'll take that CT save thank you hopefully yep cool so now we should be able to revive everyone so what happens here is MCP picks up Virgil this part makes perfect sense to me uh, because it cannot fail my G then shoots the last samurai who was then put into range for our elemental as well as the next two is Nibis that are gonna happen this is also gonna put the chemist into retreat mode Although, because everybody else will be dead, he will instead switch back to attack mode. Basically. On the other hand, it's now perfectly safe to try and start stealing, as far as I'm concerned. So let's see if we can't get the summon gun. Come on, 44. It's tactics! What's happening? I'm supposed to be getting hit. <laughs> I'm supposed to be hitting all of these low percenters. That's the game as I recall it. All right. And she is gonna be well within range for that Chocobo gun plus, uh, plus elemental, like I say. She might have good with me, does she? She does, so she's actually just dead. Cool. Yeah, I should have been doing this with my G much sooner because it's actually a very viable option to use the Chocobo gun. Especially if you didn't power level a whole bunch, and that's another reason to not do that, because it does kind of change which items are even viable to a certain degree. Because imagine doing this at level 99, where enemies have well over four or 500 health. Well, at that point, the 144 damage guaranteed from the, uh, not the summon gun, but from the chocobo gun, all of a sudden that's a lot less impressive, you know what I mean? But here at low levels, it's, it's huge. It's huge. And it's funny because it's almost self-serving in a way because if you if you are a low level then that means you get to take better advantage of some of the items in this game which means that you can continue to stay at a lower level which means it's easier and easier you know you see what I'm saying it's it's almost circular logic in a way it's like a cycle in a way so that's one good reason that you should or, that's one reason that you would, I guess I should say. It's a single-player game, right? Do what you want. But, that's one reason that you would do better to think about the things that you can use. 
to get by without a whole bunch of grinding because you're going to be taking options off the table in some respects as you level up more and more. Also, let's not forget about Marche over there. My G should outspeed Marche because we have the thief hat. Makes sense to me. I really doubt there's anything special here. Yeah, he, he was a squire. He was a squire, so there was nothing really great about that. Ooh, samurai. Ooh, chemist. I don't know why I said ooh, chemist, but yeah, there's a chemist. So we're going to miss out on some of the potential goodies here, but it's not really a necessity as far as I'm concerned. I'm sure we can play around it. Come on, man. Work with me. Oh, uh, this was merely a chemist. I don't know what this could give me, if anything. Uh. Oh, actually. Damn, I wish I would have got that on MCP. Aw, oh, man, that would have been so nice to have all those free talk skills. Man, all of these crystals today. I don't know how helpful they really are. I don't have a samurai yet. Wish I did, but I don't, sadly. You don't, right? No, but she's very close. I forget what exactly it is that she's missing here. Probably night, I want to say, but she's really close. She's just not quite there. Not quite there. She will be the one to pick up those crystals, though, because... Uh, she sees the most benefit, without a doubt. Oh, God damn it, Marche! He's gonna take my crystals! Well, if nothing else, this is easy, easy, easy chemist experience for my, for, uh, my G. How close is he? Yeah, we got him up to over 500 in a single battle, so he's gonna have more than enough time. That's good enough. Without a doubt. It's not good enough. This God damn... Give me your shit! Come on, dude! You're holding us all up here. Thank you. Is there anything else I needed off of this guy? It's it's much too late to get the rest of the good stuff, obviously. Uh, he had a black robe. These are pretty decent, but we can buy them soon enough. Yeah, I'm not really worried about that. I'm cool with getting one magic cannon here. That's more than enough. We can make up the rest of the guns I'm going to need later in other ways. It's not so much for the damage that I need them so much as the range. So it's not really... It doesn't really change anything. He's gonna mess me up, isn't he? He's gonna take the Simurai Crystal! Now this guy is useless now, so... Have fun with that, buddy. Nice 15. Good damage, good damage. Dude's pretending to be a monk of some kind. Oh, nice, good. I can still get that on the stealth. And then... Can I... Marche! Can I shoot him? No, I can't shoot him. I don't want, wait, 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 I just realized what I said. No, let's not shoot Marche. Let's not shoot the, <laughs> oh man. I'll take her strike, I guess. You just know Estelle could have gotten so much more from that though. See, this is exactly why nobody likes you, Marche. I know your thing is about crystals, but come on, man. Why do I even do this for you, man? Why did I even do this for you? Whatever though, chemist goes down, fight is complete. Marche levels up. Oh, I don't even want to take him, though. I've just realized he's level 23. Why would I want to take him, then? Why isn't he your average level? Why is he the enemy's average level? That's annoying. <laughs> because that's going to boost all... the. Uh, it's going to boost up the power of literally everything I'm fighting from now on. Because I'm not level 23. I'm not even close to that. <sighs> the things we do. I understand your lives are important, but... Is that it? Is that all? That was easy! <laughs> all I needed was the rubber shoes. What happened? Marche, that prick, though! <laughs> He's gonna make the rest of this act a lot more difficult if I choose to recruit him, which I will. Oh, there's our sprint shoes. Cool. Alright, kid. If you insist. He's gonna reflect here on his merciless slaughter of that last group, but on the other hand, it was their fault. We did try to talk our way out of it, so uh, them's the brakes, as it turns out. I wonder what father would have done. Your? It's Olad. Turns out he's pretty important. We meet again. A black lion's crest. You're a non -ten. So, you killed the deserters for us. I never thought a Baal would help us. Dude, you don't understand. It's not like that. Not because I wanted to. Yeah, they were just dumb. I know. You didn't want to fight, right? Same here. I don't go after deserters because I want to. You know what I mean. You know me. 
Yeah, I saw your name and face on the wanted list. As a dangerous heretic. What did you do? Are you gonna try and catch me? I wouldn't try it if I were you to see what we did to those last guys. Yeah, shut up, kid. I have galaxy stop. Now, why would I do that? You're way beneath me. Our job's to catch deserters. No need for us to be involved. But your brothers are after you. Run before they come. I like how Olan helps us out here a little bit. Why do you continue to fight? As long as your brothers point swords at us, it'll continue. So if Lar quits, Gotana would too. But that will never happen. If you see Orlan do of Nanta, let me know. Some are urging Larg and Gotana for game. We're in the palm of their hands. They're the real ones to beat. Why Orlando? My father used to say he was his only friend. Orlando's my father-in-law. I'll tell him that. Yeah, buddy. That's why Olan is so awesome, I have no doubt. But he is an in-law. I thought that they were blood-related. Hmm. Maybe they are. It's not really... Well, I guess he couldn't be, could he? Who cares, man? I still say it runs in the family, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Do you believe me? I don't know why they're trying to collect holy stones. If it's for the people, I won't interrupt. But if it's for self-gain, Orlando won't allow it. He'll promise to kill in the name of Thunder God Sid. Do you know about the High Priest's plot? Yes, but there's no proof. We're investigating it, but you may know better. If we prove it, would you st no, if we prove it, would you stop the fighting? Do you have proof? <sighs> why, my G? Why? I know. Well, I know why. It's because he's worried about Alma, but it seems to me that if he would have showed Olan the proof, which, which the Germanic scriptures very much is proof, then this whole story from here on in could have taken a very different direction. But on the other hand, how does my G even know to trust Olan? I suppose. They've only ever really met the twice, and yeah, he's, he seems like he'd be a good guy, and he's helping us out right here. But how many times has somebody been betrayed in this plot so far, you know what I mean? And my G is kind of breaking out of some of that naivete at this point. He's kind of realizing that if he wants change, he's going to have to take actions into his own hands. So in that sense, I understand sort of... I, I understand both sides, I guess. But man, things would be very, very different if we <laughs> had just told him about the Germanic scriptures here. No one knows whether the war will end or not, but I'm sure Orlando would quit. Hold on, shall we go? Alright, I'm coming. I must go, my G. Take care. You as well, my G. My G, you're not alone. You have friends, allies who'd risk their lives. I'm one of them. Yeah, I'm thinking that he just chooses not to say, though, because of Alma, right? Thank you, Olan. <sighs> Thank you indeed. Don't join us or anything, but hey. All that said, that is going to do it for me. Because next time, it's going to be <laughs> in the AI's hands as to how long the map will really take. Because uh, a certain individual who is not very bright, let's say, and just loves getting herself killed at every opportunity... <laughs> is going to make herself known loud and clear. So look forward to that. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up. So at any rate, if you're still watching, consider leaving a like rating. It will help me out tremendously. Let me know your thoughts as well. And I will catch you guys on the next one. See you then. Peace.